Is it worth getting an electric car in 2024? I got my first electric vehicle about three years ago. This was a Tesla Model 3. It's now come to the end of its lease and it has to be given back. What should I do? Should I replace it with another electric car? Or should I go for a plug-in hybrid? Or a self-charging hybrid? Or just ditch the electric car altogether? In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my thoughts on this and hopefully get some of your thoughts and feedback on what to do next. By the way, nothing in this video should be constructed as financial advice and the video is for educational use. However, hopefully um, I'll give you some tips to help you make an informed decision. Um, I'm not from the auto trade and I'm speaking to you as a consumer here. Let's look at some history. Back in 2021, there was abundant grants from the government to encourage you to get an electric vehicle. You could get a plug-in car grant, which gave you as much as 2,500 pounds off the cost of a new vehicle. This grant is no longer available for standard electric cars, but at the time of recording this video, there was still some help available if you wanted to buy a wheelchair um, accessible vehicle, a moped, a motorcycle, and perhaps a truck. Um, you could also get help towards installing a, a car charger at home in the form of a electric vehicle home charge scheme grant. Um, this has also gone. There's currently no grant at all for those who own their own home. If you're a, a tenant and flat owner, you can get £350 using the current uh, EV charge point grant. However, you might find that your um, vehicle manufacturer will offer you similar incentives and perhaps even a free charging allowance. A zero benefit in kind tax incentive was one of the best incentives for getting an electric car. It meant that if you were an employee or if you were a director driving a company car, you could allow some of the value of the car or the cost of the car against tax. This today is still a favorable benefit, although the benefit in kind rate is no longer 0%, it is still quite generous and you need to get the advice of accountant to help you crunch the figures. Electric vehicles did not have to pay road tax initially and were exempt from many uh, congestion charging schemes. I can't see any of these incentives returning but it's important that you check what the current government policy is when you make a decision. So as you can see, the government did offer many perks at one point, which have all been lost. In the UK, we were behind many of our European counterparts from the beginning. Some of them who offered VAT exemption, no import duties, exemptions from toll roads, free parking and free charging using government facilities, and even access to bus lanes. Now we're going through a period of high inflation and higher interest rates. So if you are financing your new electrical vehicle, which I assume most people are, your monthly payment will likely be higher than in the past. Depreciation of electric vehicles has also increased, sometimes quite dramatically. As the future value of any finance offer is factored into its terms and conditions, you might have to pay more per month than you did in the past and perhaps pay a higher deposit to try and get an EV. This can unfortunately result in negative equity if you're involved in an accident where your car is written off or if for some reason you had to return it earlier than you originally planned. It's important to shop around to source your new vehicle. Cost of electricity has also increased. Initially it was around 10 pence per unit. It's now 30 pence per unit and it can be even higher than this. It's now rare to find a free charger and the cost of public chargers can be as high as 80 pence per kilowatt hour. We still have challenges with the infrastructure with electric charging in the UK. Another cost we have now is the increased cost of car insurance. This is compulsory in the UK and can cost thousands of pounds even if you're an experienced driver. Prices have risen sharply recently even for non-EV vehicles. In the UK if you've got a non-fault claim it will still likely lead to your insurance going up. As I mentioned previously the cost of car insurance has gone up for all vehicles not just the electric ones but you may find that the cost of insuring an electric vehicle has gone up proportionally more with some insurance companies simply refusing to quote for them. Electric vehicles still need servicing and repairs, whilst the cost and frequency of the servicing may be less. Getting hold of spare parts can take considerable time. In addition, fewer garages can repair electric vehicles. The problem of electric vehicle batteries costing a fortune to repair, if they can be repaired, or replaced, can result a car being written off, even in a relatively minor accident. I also mentioned plug-in hybrids at the beginning of the video. These usually have a smaller battery with a range of around 50 miles in pure electric mode and they also have a traditional combustion engine. They can make a great deal of sense if your daily commute is under the pure electric range as they'll run in electric mode most of the time. For the rare longer journey the combustion engine kicks in. However they may have higher servicing fees and all the costs and, and headaches associated with a combustion engine. For example oil changes etc etc. 
I initially switched to an electric vehicle back in 2021 because of the monthly diesel costs which were costing me over £500 a month. So at the time the saving in terms of fuel costs actually covered most of the cost of the lease payment. I live and work in a rural area so congestion charges did not concern me. So it seemed like a no-brainer at the time to go for the electric vehicle. Today the decision is not as clear because you've got increased lease costs, increased insurance and the increased electricity bills which narrow the savings that you can make. So for those of you considering getting your next new car, will your next new car be an EV or will you go for a plug-in hybrid or perhaps a self-charging hybrid or will you stick to the traditional combustion engine? Please let me know your thoughts below. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.